Hi there and welcome to the sew along for the Martha apron dress. I'm Trish from trishnewbury.com and thanks for buying my patterns. So this is a dress in the Lagen look style. It's designed for woven fabrics. The fabric I'm sewing today is a linen look. Um, it's a rayon polyester blend. Um, this pattern looks really good in linens, um, it looks great in cottons, it looks great in something that's got a bit of substance in it. It's sort of more of a trans-seasonal dress and it's designed for layering so you will need to wear a t-shirt underneath it or a shirt underneath it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to sew with a woven fabric today. There's one centimetre three eighths of an inch seam allowances and I'm going to finish the raw edges with a three thread overlock and I'm going to use a wide three thread so my left needle and my two loopers and uh, when you're ready let's get started. So we're going to jump straight in and sew these pockets. Now these pockets are lift away pockets which are very similar to a cargo or an accordion style. So the pieces we're going to need are the upper front, we're going to need the pocket top, the pocket and the pocket band as well. So on the information sheet I said you may need tailor's chalk. So the tailor's chalk will just be that little bit more helpful to sew the pocket onto the front. Um, you don't have to use tailor's chalk. Um, if you do use tailor's chalk, try and just use white. Any other colour um, will stain. Well, I've never had any luck getting any other colour out of fabrics other than white. So when you've marked your drill holes on your front piece, your upper front piece, which are here, so the drill holes are marked at one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. What I've done is I've drawn the pocket stitch line into place. So with my tailor's chalk I've drawn this into place. So my drill holes are set in by one centimetre, three eighths of an inch on all sides. So make sure you have a way of marking the placement. I've done this a couple of times and I think this is the easiest way if you're not used to just working with drill holes or you're more of a um, confident beginner sewer to get a really good look. All right. So once you've marked that in on both sides, we're going to start with the pocket. Put the front away somewhere safe and take the lower pocket piece. With the pockets, we have a pocket top, a pocket base and then the band. So we're just going to have a quick look at the pocket base. The pocket base is the piece with one notch just at the center of the top. The other piece which is the pocket top has notches both sides. So the piece we're working is is the one that's more of a square. The one we're not working with is the one that's a rectangle. Now my fabric was really hard to tell which was the front and the back so what I did is I just marked in chalk um, the right side of all my pieces. Alright, so take your pocket base and place it right side up and then take your pocket band and place it right side down so we have right sides together. So we need to know which is the top, mainly if you have nap or direction. So, so make sure that the side that has the notch in it is at the top. So this will be the top, this will be the bottom. Right. So as we're placing the strap on, what you'll notice is these notches down the side of the strap and that will show us our turn position. So when you're ready, place this to the side and we're going to sew that in a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to sew all the way down till we get to opposite that notch. Now that notch should be one centimeter, three eighths of an inch up from the bottom. If you stop with the needle down in your work, lift, turn this around and pivot. Now we're going to continue sewing to the same position on the next corner. If your notch is deep enough, you will have absolutely no problems doing this. If it's not, just snip that notch 
a little bit deeper so that it's maybe half or three quarters of the way towards that three eighths of an inch line and that'll just help you turn like so and when you're ready stitch across again and if you want to preempt it you can just cut that notch a little bit deeper before you get there so go across and stop directly opposite that notch so you should be on that three eighths of an inch line there and then lift and turn and so all the way back up like so. now I probably should have told you to do the pressing first but I just wanted um, to make sure that you didn't have any problems with it um, which is hopefully the reason um, Sorry, there's an alarm going off in the background. It's driving me crazy. I'm just going to stop the video for a moment and I'll start again. Sorry about that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to our iron and press a seam to the wrong side by one centimetre, three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've pressed the other side under one centimetre, three-eighths of an inch. Um, you might decide it's easier for you now you know what you're doing to press that before you start sewing the other pocket, completely up to you. Okay, so just make sure that the corners all look nice and tidy, by that I mean here. And what I'm going to do now is just turn this round like so. And this is a step you don't have to um, do, but I like the look of. What I'm going to do is just push it like this, and I'm going to edge stitch. So close to the edge, it's a top stitch and it's um, only pin width apart so a millimeter or two so like one sixteenth of an inch it's really close to the edge I'm just going to let my presser foot be my guide and this is really for looks so it's up to you whether you want to do this or not um, I find it easier to do this before I press it some of you may not and there's no need to back tack it's purely a decorative it's just to make it look a little bit more um, industrial like a cargo pocket so make sure that seam's pushed all the way out I'm going to go to the edge there um, and I'm just going to turn it round and do the other side and I'm going to do all three sides so this is what my pocket looks like now now take your pocket top and we have two sides that have notches in them so turn one of them to the wrong side and press a seam at one centimeter three eighths of an inch and then what we're going to do is place this right sides together like so but we're going to leave one centimeter here three-eighths of an inch and we're going to sew the ends of this together at you guessed it one centimeter three-eighths of an inch so we're just going to sew from the top of that fold and make sure you back tack to the folded edge and do that at both ends Okay, so now turn it through. We're turning it so wrong sides are together, right sides are out. Like so. So let's arrange our pieces. Take the main part of the pocket and at the side here, so here's the top, take that fold you pressed in and just fold it over so that fold is resting on the stitch line like so and just hold that in place with a pin and do the same on the other side so we're just folding it back on itself like so
and then we want to take the pocket top and um, the side that's the raw edge not the side that we pressed so the side with the notch we want to match like so so this is what it looks like on this side when we turn it over that's what it looks like on the other side so what we're going to do now is and it's a good idea to sew it from the side is to stitch across these layers here we're going to stitch just these two together here in a one centimeter seam so I'm just going to um, take that pin out so we don't want to catch that folded edge there so I'm going to start here make sure you back tack and match that um, notch in the center so that's what we want to be left with okay so now what we're going to do is just tuck all this in like so When you have all those um, edges tucked in, turn over to the right side and I'm going to sew um, a line of stitches at 5mm which is just under quarter of an inch just to hold that into place and to make it look a bit like a patch pocket I suppose. And it is a bit bulky. Oh my machine didn't like that, okay. Right, so that's what it'll look like from the front and we've held it down on the back and you can see it's start of, starting to, try, to look a bit like a patch pocket on top. So go and give that a press and make sure it's all nice and sharp and then go and repeat the pocket again for the pocket on the other side. Right, so we're going to sew the pocket onto the front now. So take your front and place it right side up and I'm going to start on the left side as you wear it. So the first thing you need to just do is double check that your pocket fits um, that line you chalked in, which mine does quite nicely. So there's two steps to this. We have to sew here to here on the pocket top and then we have to sew the pocket down but we only want to sew the side that's folded not the side that I put the top stitching in so we need to check where the notch is in the corner because we want to make sure that notch that our corners still stay pretty much in the right place so I'm just going to pop a pin directly opposite that notch for the corner just to sort of eyeball it because I know that that's where I want the bottom to be and um, so that's how it's going to go on like so so let's just start um, you can do a decorative triangular stitch or back tack if you like. If you want to do a um, triangular stitch which is what I'm going to do. So what you do is place your pocket on the correct way with the top at the top and just turn this around 180 degrees. So we're going to start from the edge here. So line up your um, needle just in from the edge so uh, 1 16th of an inch in from the edge and that's where we want to start our stitching from and it needs to be on the line of stitching here and we're going to bring it out to about three stitches which is around about quarter of an inch maybe like that so what I'm going to do is run a quick back tack and then eyeball a line there straight up to the six mil quarter of an inch line where I'm going to stop with the needle down so I'll do a couple forward couple back stop with my needle down lift turn and pivot and I'm going to stitch to the outside edge and I'm going to just stop short of it with my needle down Oop, go and whoop it too far I'll go back there and then lift turn and pivot back to my starting position but parallel to the outside edge 
So not only is that decorative, that would give me a really good reinforcement to the top of the pocket where the hand goes in. So now we've done that side. We're going to start stitching just this bottom layer to the garment. So it's a little bit tricky at the start. You need to get as close to the top as you can. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And all I'm doing is lining up that edge with my chalk line. And I need to get that line I stitched just out of the way. I'm going to stitch down. Let's slip off. We'll try it again. There we go. edge stitch down. When we get to where the corner is, stop with the needle down. Lift, turn and pivot. And then find the position of the next corner, which is there for me. Continue stitching. Lift, turn, and pivot. Now we're at this side, we're going to do exactly um, what we did before but sort of in reverse. So we're going to start at the edge of our stitching and find 6mm, quarter of an inch out from the edge. Of course if you're just sewing a straight stitch that's um, nice and easy, just continue up to the edge. I'm going to angle a line towards that 6mm. Okay, so repeat the pocket process for the other side and then put that front piece away somewhere safe and we'll move on. Now I'm going to get quite a lot of our seam tidying up all at once. It saves us from going to and from our overlocker all the time. So here is one side of my back piece. So the back is cut as a pair one this way, that one this way, some people call that two mirrors. Um, if you have the fabric you um, can certainly drop the seam allowance and cut this on the fold if you want. But for now what I'm going to do is finish tidy the centre back seam, which is the long straight one, and also the side seam here. So I'm going to do that for both sides of the back. Now I'm going to tidy both sides of my front piece. I'm going to tidy the short ends of my lower front piece. And I have two side back pieces like that, so I want to tidy this edge here and this edge here that has a curve in it.
and then I should have also overlocked this curved edge of the center back pieces as well. And for now, this is our elastic um, channel piece. So we need to serge tidy this long curve outside edge. Now we have got more overlocking to do, but we'll do that as we go. So it's a good idea now to plug your iron in because we're pretty much going to be sewing a seam, pressing a seam. We'll start with the back. So take your back pieces, place them right sides together and we're going to sew together the centre back seam in a 1 centimetre 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back tack at the beginning and the end. Now as I mentioned earlier, if you have the fabric, you could always have cut this out on the fold and um, certainly save yourself this step. So that's my centre back seam done. I'm now going to go to my iron and I'm going to press it open, which means I'm going to press it so that it looks like that. Now we're going to sew this um, strangely shaped side back piece to the centre back, or the lower back there. So the side we're working on is the side with the curve. Make sure um, you place this right sides together and there are notches to match as you go to make sure you get it in the right place. So I'm going to start from more of the curved edge here. So the seam is also one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. Right, so if you've done this correctly, especially matching the notches, at the top you'll have this triangular bit. Now that's absolutely correct, because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're stitching the garment together at the, at the sew line, not at the seam line. So this is perfectly correct to have this little triangle at the top edge. So do that on both sides and then press that seam open as well. Now if you're using bulky fabric and it doesn't want to press open, you can also press that towards the centre back seam. It really won't make a difference. Some fabric will be quite happy to let you um, press it open, some won't. So just go with the fabric um, and press it towards the centre back if you need to. I'm just going to sew on the other side back before I go to the iron. Now I'm going to sew the lower front to the front so the first thing you need to do is at the lower front there are five notches. There's one on one side, there's one in the centre and two either side of it. So these positions correspond to marks on our front, upper front. So the centre is going to sew to this high part here and then the other two here as we go around. So what does that mean? Basically take your front, place it right side up, take your lower front, place it right side down so we have right sides together. 
and we are going to stitch those two edges together. Now I have, um, some of you might be saying, oh you usually sew the upper front sides together and then the bottom together and sew this last. I have done this a couple of different ways. If you want to change the construction sequence, please feel free. Um, I just found this way worked a bit easier, otherwise we were dealing with quite a lot of bulk of fabric, but certainly um, whatever works for you is good. So we're going to start at the side seam here. We're going to sew the lower front to the upper front in a one centimetre seam allowance. And the fabric I'm working with here is really quite fraying. Um, and it's quite stretchy as well. It's got quite a bit of give in it. Because we're sewing a straight to a convex seam, you just have to be very careful to make sure that all your marks match. So I'm coming up on my first notch. So I'm coming up into the center of my garment and when we stitch up here what we've got to imagine is we've got to find the point one centimeter three eighths of an inch in from the center notch and that is going to become our pivot point. So that point there if you drew a line up from the center up on the center line is where we're going to pivot to. So what that means in practicality is we're going to need to slightly cut into the seam just like a notch but you have to be really careful you might find it easier to do this afterwards but I mean after we've got to the pivot point so continue stitching up until you get to that pivot point so at this point here I'm going to stop with the needle down in my work right so now I'm one centimeter three eighths of an inch around I'm going to lift, turn and pivot and rearrange my work. Now I slightly cut into, um, cut a notch into that. The reality is it's going to be about um, one centimetre, lot, maybe longer. What we need to do is we need to arrange this and pivot this around to continue stitching on the other side without creating any um, puckering. So you might just need to pull this fabric around a bit and then just pop your presser foot down and continue to stitch down. Just make sure your next notch matches. And continue stitching to the other side seam. So I'm going to go to my overlocker and just overlock tidy this raw edge here. straps take two of them and place them right sides together and we're going to sew around three sides leaving this short end open so start sewing a seam at one centimeter three eighths of an inch there are notches to match to help you as you sew when you come to the pointy end stop the same distance, lift, turn and pivot. Stop one centimetre before the end, three eighths of an inch, lift, turn and pivot. Stop one centimetre before the end, three eighths of an inch, lift, turn and pivot. And stitch 
touchdown. Now turn this so that we have wrong sides together and give it a press and then repeat again for the other strap. So what I'm going to do now is some top stitching. So decide which um, side you like the most and that can be the front because for some reason top stitching always looks better when you do it from the right side. And I'm going to top stitch through um, at footwood, which is 5mm, just under a quarter of an inch. Okay, and don't forget to repeat that for the other strap. Now it's up to you if you want to do your buttonholes now or do them later. Um, I'm going to do mine later. Now it's time for the side seams. So take your front and back and place them right sides together and match the side seams. The, there are notches to match as you go down the side and you should be able to see them through your overlocking. Now just like I mentioned earlier if you've done it correctly what we're doing is we are matching the stitch line here so you should have if you match this correctly a little triangle piece at the top at the underarm point and your stitching point should come on directly at that join position so the one centimeter line so three eighths of an inch and so the side seams on both sides. Make sure as you stitch that the lower front and back seam matches. Now the one thing about when you start to match the lower front, because the um, so the back is cut on a bit of a bias, so you're going to find the lower back piece or the back piece has more given it than the lower front piece because it's cut on the straight grain. So all that means is you might just need to ease this in a bit. If you don't do the easing in properly. Um, what you will end up with is the back will sit lower than the front and it is entirely due to that bias which is um, when you cut things on the bias things stretch so just take your time and make sure you ease in that difference by releasing your presser foot as you go and you will find that the um, hemlines match so I've done one side I'm now going to go ahead and do the other side now the seam run matters the seam run is the direction you sew when you sew try and always sew from the top of your garment to the bottom on all seams or bottom to the top doesn't matter which way you do it um, as long as you're consistent so what does that mean with this garment it just means flip it over to sew it and it's always good to make sure the bulk of your sewing is to the left anyway. Okay, so you can see how on this one I haven't quite managed to ease in enough. I'll just trim that off um, as long as my back tacking isn't um, interfered. I'll adjust that when I do the hem. So go to your iron and press those seams open like so. 
Now let's work on the facing for the neckline and the armhole area. So make sure you fuse your pieces before you begin. I haven't given a suggestion for fuse because fuse is a matter of um, the correct fuse for your fabric type. So just ask your fabric shop, your haberdashery shop, um, for the correct fuse for your fabric. Um, remember heat, pressure and time. And we want to fuse the front piece and both of the side back pieces. And also the other piece we need is the elastic casing to complete this step. So, place your front piece right side up and we want it to look like that when we're finished. So we want it to be sloping downwards. So what we're going to do is place that piece to that piece right sides together. Now there is a notch to match to help you out. But I mentioned the triangle earlier. So that's exactly what you'll have on this piece. You'll have a small triangle at the top and the bottom. And that's absolutely correct. Because when we stitch on the one centimetre line, that should be perfect. So go ahead and stitch your one centimetre, three eighths of an inch seam in. And go to your iron and press that open. You can see the nice straight line here. And then do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to edge finish the lower edge of the facing. Now we're going to sew the elastic casing into place. So come to the straight side of the um, centre back and place this facing on it like so. Right sides together. What you'll see is there's a notch which will show you the bottom of that. Okay, so stitch that with a one centimeter seam. Then come to the other side. Do the same thing. To sew the facing to the neck area, turn your garment right side out and then slide it inside the facing piece you've just created so you've got right sides together. Then what we're going to do, just arrange this so it's a bit easy to see, is we're going to start pinning this. So what I have done, I have pinned the seams so everything match. So the side seams match the side seams on the facing, the elastic casing needs to be sewn and pinned like this with the seams pushing out. So once you've got those pinned in place, then take a strap and place it in between the shoulder area like so and make sure it's centered and place the other shoulder seam on top and hold that into place. So this is all right sides together. So I'm going to start by sewing the v-neck first. Um, we have a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm actually going to um, start at one here and then drop it down to six mil as I go, um, just so I don't have to snip it away later. The other thing I'm going to do just for now is just move um, the strap slightly out of the way 
that's so later on when I do this other seam I can really butt it all the way over so I'll show you what I'm going to do so I'm starting at the one centimeter three eighths of an inch and it's really not much to drop it down to the six mil it's only slightly as we go down towards the center front so just slowly angle it in Stop the needle down at my centre front position, lift, turn and pivot. Do the same in reverse. Just move that strap slightly out of the way. Now I'm going to pin stitch, which is also called under stitching, just to help create rolls. So I'm just going to take out some of these pins. And what I want to do is open up. And when we pin stitch, so I'm just going to, <laughs> I know this seems awkward, it's just so we don't forget it later. We want all the bulk of the fabric to be on the facing side here. And we want to stitch pin width away from that seam, from the shoulder down towards the V neckline. Oh, and you might find it easy just to snip into the V. Don't go too far, you don't want to cut through the stitching, but you do want to go reasonably enough in. You don't want to go all the way to the end of the V, so stop maybe um, one and a half centimetres, which is nine sixteenths of an inch from it. That should be enough to help create the roll. And now what we want to do, put that strap up there, and you can butt it right to the edge. So that just saves there being a gap. I'm going to pin that back in place. And do the same thing on the other side. Now you're probably wondering why I've just pinned the strap out of the way. Um, it's because I've worked out which is the right side and the wrong side of my top stitching and I just want to make sure I don't um, get confused later on. You can certainly take the strap away if it's easier for you. Right. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting the strap back in, butting it right to the edge, wrapping this around what I will do now, and you can do this step later if you want, you could do the other seam first, but I'm going to stitch that shoulder seam into place. So what happens when you open this up is, that strap should be butted all the way over as far as your fabric will allow. So, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Alright, so let's sew the rest of the facing into place. When you um, start from the shoulder, when you start from the shoulder, just start, make sure you start from the very side of the strap. I mean, the alternative is you could sew both of these sides and slide the strap in afterwards and then do the shoulder seam. It's really whatever you want to do. Now, same thing, I've patterned this for a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you wanted to sew it at six mil, um, you might find it's just a little bit easier because it'll stop the need for any um, six more quarter of an inch, the need for any trimming back possibly.
Okay, so pull this through so wrong sides are together. And check your work. Okay. And now I'm going to do some understitching um, on the facing again. And you'll find because of the angle of it, so this is the um, where, how do I describe it? So this is the side seam here. I'm going to start maybe um, three inches, eight centimeters or so above that. So just take a note of where you start your um, understitching uh, because that's the same distance you want to finish it on the other side. So you're not going to be able to take it all the way up um, to the underarm, but just take it as far as your machine will allow. And then, um, yeah, you want it to be parallel on the, well, symmetrical is the word I'm looking for. So do your top stitching on the facing side just like you did for the neckline. Just make sure you are only stitching what you want to. Keep the rest of the garment out of the way. Now we're going to create the channel for our elastic. So come to the centre back and fold this so that wrong sides are together. And make sure that um, where you've pin stitched, under stitched, that everything is sitting so the seam rolls towards the back. And what I'm going to do just to make my life easier is pin this, but I'm going to pin it from the front. You can stitch this from the back, you can stitch this from the front. I'm going to stitch mine from the front so I can uh, get the best possible finish. It doesn't really make a difference. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching from seam line to seam line through the overlocking line. Now you want to stitch this at 3 centimeters. can't remember what that is in inches. I'll work that out and um, pop that through. And when we do that, make sure all of um, those seams face out like that. Because we're going to need them in a second to secure our elastic too. So I'm just going to use my stitch guide. It should be pretty close to being on that overlocking line or maybe just over it. You can of course change this depending on the width of your elastic you chose. So there is the channel for my elastic. Cut your elastic um, the recommended size according to the cut guide on the construction sequence. And then we're going to thread this through the channel at the back. So I'm just going to use my loop turner. So the elastic I have here is 25 mil, which is one inch width. You can go up to about a 28 if you wanted to so that's one inch and what's three mil uh, that's an eighth of an inch so one and one eighth if you want to other than that you'll have to adjust the width of the guide okay so what I'm doing is I'm pulling the elastic through the channel I haven't gone all the way yet I'm just going to secure one side first so what we need to do is secure both ends on the stitching line here. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either just stitch it directly by stitching in the ditch if you prefer. Um, that's certainly an easy way. What I'm going to do is just come back here and stitch it all into that seam there just to make sure it all sits perfectly. And um, I'm going to do a couple. I'm going to do, I'll show you both ways. So just going to go forwards and back. Let's just 
sewing within the seam allowance there and that will hold that end into place but what you can do if you want and it's certainly um, an easy nice tidy finish is if you can get that elastic through just make sure everything's sitting the correct way and stitch in the ditch which means stitch on that seam there so and I'll do that same at the other end so I've held that in place with a pin now you can adjust that elastic to suit bearing in mind the centre back is supposed to be quite baggy it's supposed to look like an apron it's not supposed to be form fitting but um, certainly adjust that to suit like so and then just make sure your elastic is um, sitting straight like that now it's time to give your garment a press and another really good thing to do is to um, hold these side seams together at the side seams so again there's two ways you can do that you can hold that in the correct place and then stitch that seam allowance together just with a couple of stitches part way down and you're stitching um, on the seam allowance only just hold it in place or alternatively you can stitch in the ditch to hold that into place so by doing that it just holds it down forces it to the inside on that side at the side seam and at the other side the side seams. So all I'm doing is just making sure they're sitting perfectly on top of each other and then I'm folding it back and just matching that seam allowance and tack stitching it together. Okay so go and give your garment a press and we can move on. Now we're working on the hem, one centimetre, three eighths of an inch has been allowed for. You can change that if you want, but the hem is slightly curved and um, just be a bit careful of um, tunnelling. So what I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to serge the raw edge, turn up by one centimetre and then plain stitch down. So I'm just going to start sewing my hem from a side seam. Now it's time for our buttonholes if you haven't done them already. So I'm just going to use my automatic buttonholer. Um, what can I tell you about the buttonholes? Make sure you stitch them with the strap the right way up. Um, make sure they're centered um, and I believe the chunkier buttons look best. I'm just going to start with one buttonhole on my straps. I've marked the position for the others. You can stitch them in if you like that look. Um, and you can just sew one if you prefer that as well. So the last step in our process is to sew on the button. So mark the button position and then um, stitch on your button in place. Alright, so give your garment a final press and you're finished.
thanks for joining me with the sew along video if you like what you see don't forget the, to hit the subscribe button and if you're on Facebook I'd love you to join my Facebook pattern discussion group and the link is below in the description so thanks for buying my patterns and I hope to see you again soon